What's up, everybody? Welcome to week 16. We made it. Typically, it's one of the last weeks, but not this year. We get a bonus week. Well, as of right now, COVID uh, apparently is just wreaking havoc throughout many sports, including the NFL. So keep an update and just keep in mind that when we do record this, yes, there are some injuries. There are some rescheduling of some events, but we're going with it. If you're loving this, take a look at the descriptions below. There's some pretty nice bonuses if you feel like throwing some bets around. We're here to help you. A couple of shocking games last week. Detroit got another win. I was a week off in my my prediction with Detroit winning two games. Colts beating New England. We'll admit it was our lock of the week. Everybody in the comments, you guys thought it was the lock of the week. Indianapolis, can they go two in a row? Can they continue to be hot? Well, let's get right into this. But before we do, I'm Matt with Beard Laws. You can find me on all the social medias as that. But if not, you don't have to go follow me. At least follow these guys. Brandon J. McDermott. You can follow me all over social media. And you can follow me, Matt Brown, at the Johanna Jones. All right. Again, go follow them. And fellas, some pretty interesting football last week, huh? Very interesting football. Uh, so interesting, in fact, it makes me not want to bet ever again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're out of luck because we're going to have to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And that's the best thing to get through some of those slumps. Let's jump right into it. We got through, you know, Monday and Tuesday and every single week there's football this week, but we're going to go with just week 16 on this video. If you want to see our Tuesday or any of the other games that we did last week, go watch the video week 15. But let's start off 49ers at Tennessee Titans and the Niners are three and a half point favorite on the road. I like this matchup and I really like this line. The Niners are strong on the road. They've gone five and two this year on the road, and Tennessee is two and zero oh as home underdogs. But playing at home, good late in the season, usually means something. So I'm going to go with the Niners to win and to cover here. Yeah, uh, well, I just think these are teams going in different directions. Like the Niners are healthy and running the ball, while the Titans are not healthy and they're not running the ball as well. So I will go with the Niners as well. Oh, we're going to agree right out the bat because. Tennessee, they're, they're just one and three in their last four games. San Francisco's five and one in their last six games and five and two in the last, last seven against the spread. That's good enough for me. So we're all going to go with the Niners. We're all just going to agree because it is Christmas time. Cleveland Browns are going to travel to Green Bay and the Green Bay Packers are a home favorite with seven and a half. Yes, that half a point. We talked about the volatility of the NFL this year, but if you were to stick with the Packers, you would have found out this whole year and betting on just them, you would have found out they've got the best record in the NFL and they've been 11 and three against the spread this year. They're also six and zero at the hostile confines of Lambeau Field in 2021. The Browns, well, they're coming off a short week. I don't like that, but I do like the Packers. So I'm taking the pack to cover here. I don't even care who's healthy and who's not for this game as the Browns are coming off of a rough week with that. And I think there's just too much talent in Green Bay now with Marquis Valdez-Scantling getting going as of last game. So I will take the pack too. Oh man, we're going to do it again. We're going to agree. So for everybody keeping track, just in the comments, let us know how many we agree upon because Cleveland, they're unpredictable, just like the NFL five and eight against the spread this year. As Brandon mentioned, Green Bay's 11 and three. They're also eight and two in their last 10 games against the spread, but two and oh against the spread when close to that 10 point favorite. They're getting close up there. I think the line might move a little bit, but I'm going Green Bay. Let's all agree, fellas. All right, let's talk about this next one because this game, I'm super intrigued. This is probably the most excited for a game that I want just because we talked about the Colts a little bit, how they've been playing hot. Arizona, we thought was one of the hottest teams. Arizona, even though they lost to Detroit, they're still a one and a half point home favorite. It certainly is a look at what does last week really mean in the NFL. The Cards, as you said, lost to the Lions. The Colts beat Bill Belichick in the past. I've been a big Colts fan this year. I've said they are a team to watch out for. Sure, they slowed, they started off slow, but they did great against the spread this year. I did not say they were going to win last week, though. I took Bill Belichick. The reason being is because you, Bill Belichick probably wins three out of four times. You bet with him, you're going to be good. That said, Indianapolis is 4-1 and one against the spread as road dogs this year. The cards, they're not so great at home. I'm going with the wind here. That means I'm going in the direction of the Colts. They're going to win by five. This is now a seriously challenging game if you're a Cardinals better, but I actually think this just has been the NFL season as a whole, no matter who's better you are, whose team's fan you are this season. Not about who you lose to, but about how you respond to the next week. And even though they look like they're missing a big piece, which they are in DeAndre Hopkins, I think Kyler Murray is just too talented not to will this team to a win that they might not not have thought they needed as much before this past week. So I think I like the Cardinals here. So Indy's nine and five against the spread this year, seven and three against the spread in their last 10, where Arizona's two and three against the spread 
in their last five. Just because of that stat, I'm going Indy. I'm agreeing with Brandon. I like Indy here. Let's keep this rolling. We got Detroit, the two win Detroit. Who would have thought we would have said that this year? And they are playing the Atlanta Falcons, a game that I'm not super intrigued about. Maybe a lot aren't, but Atlanta is a five and a half point favorite at home. You know, the Lions, they're the new kings of the NFL this year after last week's big win. Not just a, an upset, man. They blew out the Cardinals. We've talked all year about how the Lions are great against the spread. They've gone nine and five against the spread this year. Nine and five. Don't f worry about that two eleven and one record. Atlanta, however, is zero and two against the spread as home favorites. I'm going to go with the Red Hot Lions to roar their way into Hot Atlanta and to gobble those Falcons up like some hot wings. Look, the Lions aren't that bad. Period. Yes, Arizona looked completely off, but it wasn't like they were more hurt than the Lions. There's some legitimacy to Detroit's win this past week. As for Atlanta, there's something going on there. I mean, just from my own eye test, Matt Ryan just seems so frustrated and not on the same page with the coaching staff when he's on the field. With that, I see the Lions, I'm not going to guarantee a win, but keeping it at least real close and covering in this. I like it. Let's agree again because Atlanta, they're two and three against the spread in their last five, where Detroit is four and one against the spread in their last five. That's good enough for me. I like Detroit plus five and a half here. All right, let's go to the next one. We've got a division rivalry, Baltimore Ravens, Cincinnati Bengals, and Cincinnati is a two and a half point home favorite. You know, it, it was an ugly win for the Bengals against Denver, but no one's going to remember how pretty it was. They will, however, remember that it's a notch in the win column. The Ravens, they've lost three straight, and if Baltimore loses again, it's likely game over for their playoff chances. I like Joe Burrow and company to win and to cover at home. Look, another game that could be for the division uh, this year, and we saw this earlier in the year. I liked how since he matched up with Baltimore the first time around, and I was right, I'll double down here and say that they can do it again as one of the better run-containing defenses in the league. I like the Bengals. I'm going to go with Baltimore here, all right? Yes, Baltimore is 7-7 seven and seven against the spread, or 0-2 oh after, you know, trying to go for two, because that is clearly Jim Harbaugh's move, but... Baltimore did win early in the season, 41-17 against these guys. They're 4-1 against the spread in the last five. That's good enough for me. I'm going with the Ravens on the road with the points. Los Angeles Rams taking on the Minnesota Vikings. And the Rams are a three-point favorite on the road. Short and simple here. The, the Rams haven't been great this year as a road favorite. The Vikings, they're 2-0 as home dogs. So I'm going to go with the home team and the upset here over the Rams. Yeah, careful with this one as the Rams have had their injury and COVID-related issues, making it a short week for both teams. I'll say this. If Minnesota can be at full strength, notably with Adam Thielen, who's missed some time and has hurt my fantasy team in some leagues, I you think they can that. cover with the line where it's at. At the very least, they could maybe even win outright. But I know it will be a move depending on who's available. I will take the Vikings cautiously in this one. Normally, I come out and go, Skull! Because I'm going to go Minnesota, but because of the injuries and because they're probably going to cost me a fantasy championship, I'm going the Rams and I hope the Rams win by 40. We're going to move on to a divisional game that has a lot on the line. This is the second most exciting game for me. Maybe it's the first for you guys, but it's the Buffalo Bills, the New England Patriots, round two. This time, New England is a two and a half point home favorite. Late season rivalry game. Hopefully it snows. It'll be a great game like it always is between these two teams. Whatever happens weather-wise, though, it's not going to be similar to that windy game we saw just a, a few weeks ago. Whoever wins this, likely wins the division. The Pats always do well after losses and are three and one following a loss this year. The Bills do well away from Buffalo. I know last week was a bad game and a bad week for the Pats, but we each know the reset button is going to be hit for the Patriots. And you know, Bill Belichick is good after a loss. The Pats win and cover. So interesting. And, and maybe the most interesting game of the week for me. I mean, the Bills and the Patriots, the last time we saw them, it was just the Patriots running and running and running and running some more. So I don't think that's going to happen this time around. And I do think that the Bills kind of have something on Mac Jones, even though they weren't able to see that the first time around, which means I like the Bills to respond and win outright in this one. Yeah, well said. I mean, Mac Jones threw the ball three times, but they were playing in like a, a mini tornado in Buffalo, but we're in New England. And like I said, it was 14-10 last time. Bills were a three-point favorite at home. They're eight and six against the spread this year. New England's nine and five, but New England's four and one against the spread in their last five. That's good enough for me. All the facts that Brandon said, 
I'm agreeing with him again. All right. I, eventually, Matt, I'm gonna get I'm gonna be nicer to you. Don't worry about that. But I'm agreeing with Brandon. I like New England here. Let's talk about a game that nobody wants to talk about. So we'll be quick about this one. Jacksonville, New York Jets in, in New Jersey. They're a two and a half point favorite. Man, I just want to say thanks for agreeing with me. You know, every dog has his day. But how often have we seen a head coach get fired in the NFL over the many last 10, 15 years? And that team respond with a big win for their interim head coach. I see that happening this week after the Jags fired Urban Meyer after just 14 games as an NFL head coach. The Jets are favorites at home and they played well against Miami last week after, after obviously losing. But I'm going to take the Jags and the road upset in this one. I like that we keep seeing these bottom four teams fight for a draft spot every week recently. I just straight up think though that the Jets are better and they are trying harder. I know there's motivation in Jacksonville and I know that was a midweek firing and they could have been a little off their game going into that week. But I mean, if they really wanted a post Urban Meyer statement win, I still think they should have just beaten the Texans. So. I will go with the Jets here. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Jets be just because Jacksonville's 0-5 in their last five games against the spread. I see it being 0-6. Let's move on. We have another game, another division. And weeks ago, we talked about what we typically try to do in a division game late in the year. New York Giants traveling to Philly to take on the Eagles. Eagles are a 10-point home favorite. You no, know, the Eagles are clearly the better team, but this is a big line. New York is playing anyone off the street who can take snaps under center, I hear it. And word has it that Eli Manning is thinking about coming out of retirement just to lose this game by 14. I'm taking the Eagles to cover here against the depleted Giants squad. Short week, don't care. As long as the Eagles defense shows up, I think they can cover. Daniel Jones is shut down for the season and the Giants offense just doesn't look the same without him. And that is saying something. So I like the Eagles in this one. Eagles won the first matchup again with a different little bit of a roster. 13-7. Philly was a four-point favorite. Different. You know what? I'm going to agree just because Matt makes a great point, and I deserve to be nice to him because I've been agreeing with Brandon. But I agree with Brandon and Matt. Let's go Philly on this one. And let's move on to another big spread. Tampa Bay on the road. Ten and a half point favorite. Traveling to Carolina. Talk about a big letdown last week with the Bucks and Tom Brady being shut out. Brady became the butt of jokes and memes all over the internet, and some of those are just, oh, wonderful. The Panthers, however, injury prone this year, but now the Bucks are too, with Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, and Chris Godwin all getting injured last week. I do like the Bucks to rebound here, but that line, it scares me. I'm taking the Bucks in the money line. I get it, and the Bucks are kind of injury prone now but the Panthers are just a total mess. I don't think it's just the injuries. I just think there's a total loss of, of the locker room, I think, for Matt Rule. I, I just think that is more scary than this line. And I think the Buccaneers can not only rebound, but actually treat the Panthers like Tom Brady treated that one Microsoft Surface when, you know, when he just threw it down uh, to off the chair yeah anyway i like the books yeah that was probably one of his better passes of the day <laughs> i just think it's too many points i mean tampa bay they didn't put up a single point versus saints defense that isn't great they're not terrible they're not the worst in the league but zero points they're beat up i just think 10 and a half is too much i bet you that this line does move especially with more you know injuries coming out maybe some COVID stuff but at this line right now i like carolina at home plus 10 and a half what about another game that i don't think a lot of people are excited about but it's the los angeles chargers nine point road favorite traveling to houston to take on the texans heartbreaking loss for the chargers last week in overtime against their rival chiefs and that was after the chiefs had blown out the broncos and blown out the raiders we thought it was going to happen against the chargers but it didn't well i thought so matt knew it matt called it and he texted me when it was happening as it was happening i told you so he said i do like the chargers however here to bounce back but that spread is a little big for me. I'm going with the Chargers in the money line. I know that they only beat the Jaguars, but I think there was enough there for me to think that the Texans can at least keep it close in this one. Joey Bosa's out as well, by the way. So that's one big pass rusher that Davis Mills won't have to worry about. So I like the Texans to cover. Texans are just, just really bad. And, and just because of that, I think the Chargers are going to come in. They kept it close with a Chiefs team that has kind of turned it on, put on a lot of points and have blown some teams out. I think the Chargers can win double digits versus this pretty terrible team. And Houston's looking for a great draft pick. So it's a win-win for them. Go I was ahead. just going to say, who knew that Houston's quarterback was named, uh, was it Davis Mills? It's yeah. like a hot sauce yeah. company. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is. You know how back in the day, Buffalo used to have cereals named after quarterbacks with Flutie Flakes and Kelly Crunch. 
They're going to go with hot sauces in Houston. Let's go to the next game. We got the Chicago Bears taking on the Seattle Seahawks, and Seattle is a seven point home favorite. Again, a very short and simple one this time. Both teams are bad this year. Both teams are very unpredictable against the spread. This is one I would steer completely clear of, but I'm going to take the money line if pressed, and I'm going to take Seattle to win. I'll live to fight another day. I'm going off of who's worse in this matchup, and it's the Bears. Look, four and nine against the spread this year, and a bottom feeding two and five against the spread on the road as well. I just think that Seattle's at least playing a little bit better. Russell Wilson's playing a little bit better. I'll go with Seattle here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Seattle as well, just because the Bears are one and four against the spread in their last five. And I see that trend continuing. Like you said, they're a little, Seattle's the better team of the two. Not a game that excites me. And like Brandon, said i would stay clear of it because we've given you a bunch of better options and we have our locks of the week coming up so stay tuned in, in, in just a couple more picks you'll see the best games that we think are gonna hit pittsburgh steelers traveling to take on the kansas city chiefs Kansas City's a nine and a half point home favorite. The Chiefs started slow. They built up some heat in midway through the season, and now they're hotter than ever. The Pats, the Bills, the Titans, the Ravens, they were all in contention, and people were all talking about them possibly being the number one seed in the AFC this year after KC's slow start, but not anymore. All the Chiefs have to do now is to cruise home. It's a big line, but I'm going to go with the Red Hot Chiefs to win and to cover at Arrowhead. Yeah, I agree. Look, this Chiefs defensive line has been playing so well as of recent, and I think Look, Big Ben has been struggling against a good pass rush. As long as he is kind of held to having to release that ball under, I don't know, a second, I, I think the Chiefs will be able to hold the Steelers to maybe under 20, and then, you know, their offense will be their offense. I like the Chiefs. This game historically over the last three matchups throughout the last couple of years has always been within a six-point game. I just don't see this one. The Chiefs are 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games. I think they're going to go 6-0 against the spread. I like the Chiefs. And speaking of painful, let's talk about Denver Broncos traveling, take on the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders are a one-and-a-half point home favorite. Look, I hate the Raiders. They make me seethe. I don't even like saying their name. That said, the Broncos are about as reliable as that car your uncle sold you for a dollar. But it works one, it works one week, and the next week, it doesn't. And it probably is going to shut down for the next four. The Raiders, they're going to win at home. Well, I unfortunately have to bring up the fact that I just hope Teddy Bridgewater is okay after seeing the injury this past week. And unfortunately, that just means I don't trust Drew Locke. So uh, I'll go with the Raiders as well. I'm going to agree with everything said. And I was thinking it was going to be like a, maybe a Christmas miracle, you know, the day after Christmas where Denver might get a win and Brandon would be super happy. But I'm going with the Raiders minus one and a half. Let's go Washington football team traveling to take on the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys, big spread, 10 and a half point favorite at home. It's a rivalry game. It's a big spread. But the Cowboys, they're 11 and three against the spread this year. And as home favorite, they're four and two. I'm going to take them to cover, even though I shouldn't. Yeah, Brandon, I really like that stat again the spread and i like the cowboys just offensively even as dak prescott and ezekiel elliott have been looking better as the season has gone on even with some injuries i'll take the cowboys dallas won the previous matchup 27 20 but dallas is playing a little bit better but let's not forget a couple of weeks ago we talked about how hot the washington football team really was in dak i don't think is playing as good a football as he can or has played in the past but i think washington's going to keep it closer than that 10 and a half point spread so i'm going to go with washington on the road with the points let's talk about the red hot miami dolphins the fairly hot new orleans saints the Saints are a three-point home favorite. You know, the Saints with the biggest win of the season last week, shutting out the Bucks. I think this momentum does carry into this week. Miami, they won against the Jets, and they've won six straight after starting one and seven this year. So now they're seven and seven. I know you can do math, but I like the Saints to win at home and to cover. Yeah, this is an interesting one, actually. And who would have thought the Saints and the Dolphins earlier in the year? Who's going to want to watch that Monday night matchup? I actually do this time around. Taysom Hill against Tua Tungvaluwa is actually a little intriguing here. And I like both defenses. However, I do think the Saints' pass defense is just a little too good. And the Miami Dolphins is are the most pass-heavy offense in the league. I think Tua will be intercepted a too many times in this one i like the saints yeah miami's four and one against the spread in their last five they're playing hot and they're still in playoff contention because i think everybody in the afc except for the jets and are, are in playoff contention for some reason but i'm gonna go with miami on the road plus three even if they don't win 
maybe they'll keep it close. I, like you said, who would have thought this is a Monday night game that people, including myself, would want to watch? You know what else we need to do? We need to do our locks of the week. So, Brandon, kick us off with the locks of the week. My lock of the week is Drew. Drew lock. No, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> the, Bengals, the Bengals to cover, the Chiefs to cover, and uh, the Raiders to, to cover. Well, I like the Bucks over the Panthers. I like the Chiefs over the Steelers, and I like the Bengals over the Ravens. I like Detroit staying hot, plus five and a half. Carolina plus ten and a half. Raiders minus one and a half. And if if you've been paying attention, there's a couple of games that could be the unanimous lock of the week. But this week, the unanimous lock of the week is KC minus nine and a half against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And just a quick reminder, in the description below, there's some pretty nice bonuses. Take advantage of them to give yourself a little bit more money because that's what we're here to do. Again, I'm Matt with Beard Loss. Brandon J. McDermott. And at the Ohana Jones. Have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. Hopefully this brings you so much joy. You, you make so much money because that's what we're here to do. We've had an absolute blast. Merry Christmas and have a good one, everybody. We'll see you, in the, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye.